re-entry has been looking boring and uncomfortable to look at, that you just want to cry endless rivers of pain and suffering? Just how do you even work out a metadata in re-entry? Well, I finally have a full video dedicated to metadata today, and I want to sh guide you through the process of understanding said metadata with tips, tricks, and mistakes to learn from. Now, before we begin, this tutorial is for people who already know how to use re-entry in general. For example, people who have somewhat mastered the basics of using it. Example being coloring text, linking images, formatting text, and just whatever comes with basic run tree making. Metadata is basically data that just defines other data, a fully structured reference to sort identities and attribute information in it. On the other hand, metadata in this case on Rentry is just extra details to polish your boring uh, paste. Take a look at these re-entries made by Yaz and Dove. Notice anything in it? The background image and the color are different. The detailed text on the image, the font, and the shadow in the border image are all details you can spot in these re-entries. I'll be teaching everything these re-entries include in this video and I'll be giving visual demonstration for extra explanations on how the options work and how you can use them correctly to make your re-entries a hundred times more better. I quickly created this re-entry and I'm using another one for lighter demonstration and I'll be using my video recording to explain how I made it and tips I used along the way to make it perfect. Let's start with the outer area of a re-entry. Using these examples, we can determine that uh, uh, the re-entry isn't a dark gray or white like usual, but completely black. Uh, uh, and with the other comes a patterned background. This is uh, created using the container outer background color and image code. This basically turns your background into your image or selected color. To do this, write down a code on the metadata code thing and add an equal sign next to it. From there, select a color. For example, I use black here. For images, add the image link after the equal sign. For the image, it's a little bit more complex. Write these codes that I'm about to show you for your outer background. Once you're done, click preview and your background should be there. Note that you should add a background color if you don't want the background to fill in and make the whole thing look odd. Now, how do you even add a border? This one's hard, so follow carefully. You should, you should start off with your container border image. This code allows you to link the border, which is an image. This is our command to even put the border. Then followed by container border image slice. This command is basically where your border slices to create the, four, um, the perfect four borders. Like for this example that I'm showing you, the border is perfectly aligned so it, it wouldn't break off here or split there. You then go about to add container border image width. This is the width of your border. You should almost always set it to 30px. It's better for your customization. Container border image outset is basically what it's named. Best for you to set it to like 10px. Container border image repeat is the final one, and with that you set it to stretch almost always. With that, you're finally done. Even uh, if it ever looks wonky, you can always adjust until it looks right to you in your vision. Next is fitting in an image like I, how I did with my re-entry, and this is how this one achieved it too. This is called the container inner variable, and you can use it to customize the inner box of your re-entry. This is where you use your text, your images, and writable code that always goes there. For example, you see how here I put the text. This is in, inner, in the inner box, not the outer. The, that's for the background and stuff. If you've used like other website meeting, for, uh, for example, card, you should know this is the, the inner box. Like when you add your container, and from there and first and first off before i begin this is kind of long so bear with me <laughs> 
you should first start off with the container padding. If you've ever used card before, again, you should be familiar with the padding. It's the internal spacing between the inner and the outer containers. Like, you should be familiar with it. It's best to set it to default, which is 10px, so you wouldn't get like too much disturbance and interruption. You can make it smaller if needed. Next is the container max width, which is basically centering the text, but container style. It's best for like PC screens and stuff. I recommend that you keep it around the range of 400 to 600 px. Increase it at your own like taste, your own vision. Then we have this uh, like container inner background image. If you're using a similar graphic like this one, set it to transparent. Otherwise, just play around with the color if you're not using the uh, the inner image thing. Or just skip if you don't want an inner image color. Container inner background image comes in next. This is where you place your actual graphic. Using a link, I use Catbox in this case, you can finally add your graphic so you can add text over it. For example, when I use this graphic, I uh, made sure there's a blank space so I can actually put my text over it. Container inner image, background uh, uh, image repeat is best set at no repeat because this allows you to uh, uh, like the graphic to stop repeating and creating an annoying bug that just it's annoying and then finally a uh, container image inner background image size this is a major variable and it's best set a contain like just the word contain c-o-n-t-a-i-n Otherwise, you may set it to bigger or smaller, however it fits your taste. And there you have the main three container variables explained visually and audio, um, auditorily. Sorry, I don't do English. You can always add more or less settings all you want to explore more things than I explained. You can also refer to the how page in the metadata sidebar. And that's that. Finally, I'll be explaining fonts. This is pretty easy, so you don't need to put as much focus since it's around three variables at best. First, we'll look at the content font variable. This is the font for basically the whole reentry. You cannot set different fonts for all I know, for like each text, unless you use like fonts, you know, like the Instagram fonts. You may refer to the re-entry URL metadata fonts. It includes like previews and full names. I warn you that the metadata fonts require the full name with original capita capitalization for it to work. I use Roboto Mono in this example to create the following. Did you know that there's a trick the, to coloring text so uh, like a lot faster? It goes like this. Add in the content uh, text color variable and after the equal sign, add your value. Whether it's RGB values or hex is both correct and will be valid. You can also do this uh, with links. Using the content link color va variable, uh, like you could do the same thing with the same result as like the text. You can set them to same colors, different colors. You just have to use it in the correct way. And that just about sums up the metadata people regularly use. Nothing more, nothing less, for all I know. I hope all of these are useful and clear to you. If you have any questions, you may ask in my Discord server linked below, or you may ask in my Neospring. I hope you have a great day. Bye!